Luc Besson's European Movie Factory cranks out another installment. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Transporter Refueled. He's coming. We're gonna need more men. With his one-two punch of La Femme Nikita and The Professional back in the 1990s, Luc Besson became one of the few European filmmakers, in fact, arguably the only European filmmaker, to reach American mainstream audiences while still making his movies across the pond. In other words, he did not come to Hollywood. Instead, Besson continues to operate out of his native France, with plenty of named talent willing to come to him. Plus, he also discovers and rediscovers his fair share of talent as well. He discovered Natalie Portman with The Professional in 1994, Mila Jovovich with The Fifth Element in 1997, and Jason Statham with The Transporter in 2002. He revitalized Liam Neeson's career with Taken in 2009 and enabled Scarlett Johansson to realize her potential as an action star with Lucy last year. Now sure, sometimes his movies don't connect with audiences, like Columbiana, Lockout, or Three Days to Kill. But thanks to the overall strength of his production company EuropaCore's catalog, he's making films far more frequently than he was pre-taken. Well, more accurately, moviegoers are taking notice of his films far more frequently, as Besson has always been quite prolific. But first with Big Game earlier this year and now with the transporter refueled, EuropaCore is releasing its films stateside themselves, rather than partnering with a Hollywood distributor. Big Game wasn't so big at the box office, but EuropaCore should have an easier time launching its fourth transporter film, as it's an established franchise and has the entire Labor Day weekend all to itself. And yes, as you've surely noticed, that's not Jason Statham behind the wheel, and it's not Nicholas Holt either. Instead, it's fellow Brit Ed Screen, the rapper-turned-actor who first turned heads on Game of Thrones. So much so that it helped land him this role, for which he walked away from Game of Thrones, forcing the show to recast. Who walks away from Game of Thrones? While it might seem like a foolish decision, Screen not only stars here, but also plays the main villain in one of the hottest movies of 2016, Deadpool. So while Screen is definitely making a big splash in Hollywood, let's see if it's all thanks to his agent or if he's the real deal. So it seems that Nicholas Holt took too long to get his career in gear, because lookalike Ed Screen is gaining on him fast. And while Nicholas Holt is by far and away the better actor of the two, Ed Screen is by far and away the more aggressive of the two not just with his career choices, but also with his on-screen persona. I mean, Ed Screen's desire to become a movie star is tangible, in a good way. And he also looks good in a suit, and moves well in one, too. Yes, well, I called Ed Screen the living embodiment of a douche in my trailer review for this film, and I absolutely hated him on Game of Thrones. I was not sorry to see him go. He's starting to grow on me with this film. And not just because of that forceful on-screen persona, but because he does very well in his action sequences here. His moves are both deliberate and sharp, which I always appreciate. And I think he nails every single action sequence he's given here, even the ones where he's asked to rip off Jackie Chan. And as far as his acting goes, while he's no Nicholas Holt, he's certainly as good as Jason Statham. As for the movie overall, it literally has everything you would want in a B movie, except for a good director. It's got Ed Screen, it has amazing cars, it has breathtaking locations, it has a very solid gimmick in these model-esque cookers turned thieves, and the heists they have planned are actually pretty interesting. Uh, but again, the director just fails to make the whole thing gel because all of his choices are super weak. Uh, and I think the, the primary area that he fails are in the camera angle choices and also the sound design. From the soundtrack, 
to the sound effects. You should hear uh, these cars. You should hear the crashes. And I, uh, because of these weak choices, I never felt like I was a part of the action. And it's particularly noticeable coming off of uh, the recent release, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, where Christopher McQuarrie uh, directed one of the best motorcycle car chase sequences I've ever seen. And he relied very heavily on fantastic camera angles and sound design. Uh, my other problem with the film is that movies continue to uh, perpetrate this fantasy that hookers are uh, very healthy, mostly well-adjusted, uh, model-esque and sophisticated individuals, which is totally not true. Uh, but in this movie, it's believable thanks to the actresses. The actresses, I think, do a really solid job here, and they make it fun. So you're, you, the, the hookers kind of come across as like Euro uh, hooker Barbies. So the movie, that's how I would categorize it. It's fun. It's a solid B movie. And I think everyone, again, does a fantastic job across the board, except for the director. And if this movie had a great director, it would be a great B movie instead of a solid one. But if you're looking for something to watch, particularly uh, with so little in theaters right now, I think this is definitely worth seeing, especially on the big screen. And keep an eye out for Ed's screen. As we discussed, he's going to be in Deadpool, and with his action sequences so well executed here, I'm excited to see him go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe or blade-to-blade -blade with Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. All right, so that's my review of The Transporter Refueled. Oh, and by the way, I definitely think Ed Screen could take over this franchise as well if they just get that better director. Uh, so if you've seen the film, I look forward to continuing the conversation down below, and you can check out some other episodes right now. Thank you.